Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. Today we've got another collaborative episode with fellow YouTube creator Hamiltonville Farm. So if you've come to us from Hank and Wiley, you may have seen the episode. They went out, tried to get an excavator that had been sitting for about 20 years fired up. This is a Cabelco SK160 excavator. They've had a little bit of trouble getting this one going. They went out, put some batteries in it, got some juice to the starter, and they found that the engine was seized up. Try that, Hank. All right, Hank, bump it. In an effort to investigate that problem, they pulled the injectors out of the engine, put some oil down in the cylinders. They're going to see if they can get the engine unstuck. So while the injectors are out, they reached out to us and said, hey, you want to take a look at these? We're going to try and get this excavator fired up. We want to know that these injectors are in good shape. We don't know what year this thing is, probably maybe 90s, early 90s. Again, Cabelco SK160. It's got a four-cylinder Mitsubishi TD34. This is a 112 horsepower engine, 238 cubic inches of displacement. To give you a reference of what we're working on, Mitsubishi circa 1990 maybe. This injector is manufactured originally by Zexel. So Zexel is the new name for what was once Diesel Kiki, a long time fuel injection manufacturer and sometime around 1990 they were absorbed by Bosch. So today Zexel is a brand of Bosch fuel systems. Effectively this is would be known as a Bosch injector branded as Zexel. Fairly simple component just a, a nozzle in the end, some springs and shims. The injection pump supplies high pressure fuel here, lifts the pentel off of the seat and injects fuel directly into the cylinders. Pump line injector legacy fuel system, mechanical injector. We're going to take these back. We'll probably go ahead and pop these off initially just to get an idea of what type of condition they are in. Factory setting is 216 to 223 bar, which is 3100, 3200 PSI. When the high pressure fuel comes out of the injection pump, when it reaches that 3100 PSI, that's enough pressure to lift the pintle off of the seat, overcome the spring, and fuel flows through it into the combustion chamber and uh, combustion occurs. We're going to take them back, pop them off, see what kind of condition they're in. We'll disassemble them, clean them up, probably throw new nozzles in them, reset the pressure, get them back out to Hank and Wiley, see if they can get this thing cranked up. All right. Now we're back in the mechanical injector room. So this is what we call a pop tester. Fairly simple device, right? So lever operated, pumping element here, connected to a line down to the inlet of the injector like we talked about at the parts counter. We're basically replicating an injection pump and then we've got a gauge on it so we can see at what pressure the nozzle will open. We haven't touched these injectors yet. We're just going to chuck them up and, and try and get an idea of how they're operating or if they're operating. We've got this one mounted. We're going to close the valve, give her a few pumps, to make sure we're bled out. And we can already tell that this injector is not performing too well. Usually during the injection process, you can hear what we call a chatter, right? So that valve is moving up and down, chattering and uh, that's an indication of a properly functioning injector. And then the other primary thing we're looking at is nozzle spray pattern. So you want equal delivery through each of the nozzles so you can't see it, but in the very tip of this nozzle there are usually five or seven tiny holes and that's where the fuel sprays out and is atomized. Those holes are worn, plugged with carbon, the pintle is not seating in the nozzle itself, you're not going to get proper atomization. We've got this one bled, we're going to open the valve. Again, we're not hearing a chatter and we're opening at about 180 or so bar and spec was uh, two 20, I think. Opening pressure is low, meaning that the injector is going to open earlier when the injection pump delivers fuel to it. And atomization 
very poor. So we'll bring you in closer for a tighter shot, but we can see we've got uh, unequal delivery and we've got stream coming out of one or two holes. Fuel is not atomizing. This injector needs to be rebuilt. All right, number two injector. Close the valve. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but this one's got just a little chatter in it. Open the valve. Opening pressure is closer to 200. Not atomizing very well. We've got one distinct stream and the others aren't atomizing very well at all, so also no good. All right, number three, close the valve. So atomization is much better out of this injector, but it still is not perfect. We're gonna open the valve. We're about 185, 185 bar for popping off out of specification. So also a good candidate for repair. All right, number four, close the valve. Same thing, atomization is poor. A couple of the holes are streaming. We're gonna open the valve. It's closer to 210, so closer to specification, but the spray pattern is no good, so. That's it for the, for the initial inspection. These injectors are no good. So we're gonna take these back to the teardown room, disassemble them, clean them up. Uh, we'll put new nozzles in these injectors. We'll bring them back in here and uh, set the opening pressure, make sure they're spraying properly, and these will be ready to go. All right, we're back in the teardown room. We're gonna get these disassembled. We'll bring you along, we'll show you taking apart one of them. We'll skip the rest. We're gonna start, we're gonna pop the chamber gasket off. We're gonna pop the nozzle nut off. You can see, looks like these probably put up a fight when they were trying to pull them out of the engine. You can see where it looks like maybe vice grips. Actually got into the threads on this one. So we'll get these disassembled. We'll get them all cleaned up. We'll make sure the threads are gonna work. We'll move on to the next step. First thing, chamber gasket. So there's the copper washer that seals this injector into the combustion chamber. They're stuck on there pretty good. Again, this is kind of, uh, they get kind of carboned up because they're exposed to the combustion chamber. So, chamber gasket off. We've got a fixture plate mounted in our vise. Put the injector in there. Appropriately sized wrench. Not very tight. Usually those put up a fight. So here comes nozzle nut. That's what captures the nozzle. You can see a couple of pins there that time it to the injector. We're gonna keep all these parts together. So nozzle nut, here's the nozzle that we spoke about. nozzle plate and pins. Keep all that together. This is the pintle. We talked about high pressure fuel coming down in here. Operates on this pintle and that's what lifts it off of the seat. Kind of similar to a needle and seat in a carburetor. You can definitely see some wear on it. Again, these are gonna get new nozzles. There's the injector spring. Again, this is what fuel pressure is trying to overcome is the spring pressure. That's what dictates when the injector will open in regards to uh, at what pressure. We'll keep all that together. And there's the shim. So this is what determines the calibration of the injector. Put all those parts back in there. If the nozzle opening pressure is too low, increase the thickness of the shims, tighten up the spring, and increase the amount of pressure it takes for the fuel to overcome the spring pressure. So that's it. 
not anything uh, too crazy going on here. We'll get the rest of these torn down and cleaned up. So one thing to note, if you're doing this project yourself, you go to clean these up, be very cautious. Stay off of this area right here. That's a precision ground surface and just the, just the finish and tolerance are what seal fuel between them. So stay off of that when you clean them up. I don't know if it shows up, but the threads on here are super fine. So we're going to screw the nozzle nut back on, protect those threads while we're buffing this injector body. Okay, we talked about the threads earlier. You can see they got into these just a little bit right there and there. So we're just gonna run a die down over them. Make sure they don't have any troubles getting the lines back on and getting them to seal. So pop it in the fixture. You can feel it just cutting a little bit. see where it just cleaned them up right there just cutting a little bit we got four brand new Bosch or Zexel nozzles this is the business end of the injector this is really what what wears out this is what will bring these back to like new condition give them a visual put the pintle in feel it just make sure it doesn't feel like it's hanging up that one feels good mm -hmm. if these sit in inventory for a long time sometimes the rust inhibitor will start to gum up but these look just fine all right we're gonna attempt to put one of these back together now keep in mind this is not what I do for a living here but I've got some guidance from the experts if I get in over my head they're more than willing to come bail me out, but hopefully we can pull this off. We've got our body cleaned up back in the fixture. We're going to go back in with the original shim that came out, but we pretty well always see that the pressure, even with a new nozzle, the pressure will be too low, right? Maybe there's been some wear, maybe the spring has relaxed to some degree, but we always go back with the shim that came out. We always keep all the parts together, so these are the original parts with the exception of the nozzle that came out of this injector. First part back in is the original shim. We're just going to make sure it's seated and down. Spring, just a visual. Make sure it looks clean still, and it does. Spring seat is next. Set that up in the fixture. Alignment pins. Looks good. 
nozzle plate can technically go either way. We're going to put it back in like it was. These two on the sides here are the alignment pins. This is the fuel, uh, the fuel feed hole. So it's important to make sure that lines up with the body. That dude back in there. New nozzle, same thing. Alignment holes, and this is the fuel hole. So I'm gonna set that on there. Make sure she lines back up, and then the nozzle nut to capture everything back together. Gonna get it snug, we'll torque it after we verify the opening pressure. Alright, so that's it. Reassembled. We're gonna put it back on the pop tester and see what it looks like. Alright. Close the valve. Now you can hear that chatter. Hopefully that comes through in the audio. Sounds perfect. We'll bring you in tight and look at the atomization, but it's fantastic. Good chatter and just a cloud of atomization. All right, injectors chattering, atomization is good. Got the valve cracked open. We're going to sneak up on the opening pressure and see where this injector is popping off at. We're about 210. All right, so our first injector, we popped it back off a little bit low on opening pressure. So we were maybe getting to about 210 bar. Again, specification is 216 to 223 bar. So we need to come up, let's say, 15 bar. We've got a cheat sheet up here. 15 bar is roughly four thousandths, five thousandths increase in shim thickness. So we need to take this shim out, measure how thick it is, find a shim that is four or five thousandths thicker, put this thing back together, pop it off again, see if we can get it into specification. Nozzle nut. Nozzle plate and pins, spring seat, spring, and the shim. So this is the calibration for mechanical injector. All right, so we're going to throw one of these back together and see what we're looking like. We talked earlier about the shim thickness being the calibration in the injector currently has a 53 thousandths shim in it. We're going to throw it back in to start with and see what it looks like. So first thing back in the injector is the shim and then the spring. Spring seat goes in top of the spring and then there's three holes in the top of this injector. The two on the side are alignment pins the third one is the actual fuel passage so we're going to put our pins back in the injector body that's going to line up the nozzle plate make sure it's clean and put it back on in the same orientation again making sure we've got that third hole lined up that's good same thing on the nozzle three holes two for alignment one for fuel Make sure we've got that lined up, get it all captured, and then nozzle nut holds it all together. Screw that down and capture everything. Tighten up the nozzle nut. We'll come back and torque these after we're done. All right, reassembled. Back to the pop tester. All right, close the valve. 
I don't know if the audio is picking it up, but now you can hear that injector chattering. That's one of the things we're looking for. Good crisp chatter. Second thing we're looking for is fuel atomization. So we'll bring you in a little closer. Basically a cloud, right? A fine mist. Good atomization, good chatter. Open our valve, check the opening pressure. So we're about 215, which is within specification. So this injector is now ready to go. All right, there it is. Cleaned up, rebuilt, recalibrated. Atomization is good, opening pressure is correct. We'll put the chamber gasket back on, a couple protective caps. We'll get these and the rest of them sent on back to Hank. All right, how about you, Hank? Inspected, cleaned up, disassembled, new nozzles, reassembled, recalibrated, ready to go back in the engine for another circle of life. Four rebuilt Zexcel injectors for Hank and Wiley. If you haven't come to us from their channel, please go over and check them out. They're at Hamiltonville Farm on YouTube, and they've got a lot of awesome videos where they go out and try and do... Uh, Will it runs and repairs on lots of old heavy equipment, skidders and earth moving machines, all kinds of neat stuff. So be sure to go over there and check them out. Tell them that we sent you over. If you've come over to us from their channel, we appreciate you stopping by. Give us a subscribe or a like, some feedback on what we're doing here. We appreciate your attention. If you got any other content creators that you see that could use our services, please let them know to reach out to us tag us in their comment section or, or just try and hook us up together. So we love collaborating with these other channels, throwing in a, a helping hand where we can. These injectors rebuilt new nozzles. These are about $150 a piece. So $600 for a set of four. These will be good for another, probably outlive the machine. Go over and check out Hank's channel. Watch these injectors get reinstalled. See if they can get this machine fired up. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can call us at 800-637-2658. That one phone number rings all our locations in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. You can drop us an email at parts at areadiesel.com or you can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com where you'll find a wide variety of high quality information and the ability to chat instantly with a diesel engine expert through the button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. That's it. Thanks for watching.